have an Android tablet sitting around that's just kind of gathering dust, why not turn it into a secondary display for your computer? You can, and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by ExpressVPN. Protect your online privacy with one click. For three extra months free with a one-year package, go to expressvpn.com slash HOA. Hello and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell. Now that we're all working from home, some of us have had to get used to using one display instead of two. But when it comes to being productive, sometimes having that extra screen real estate can be invaluable. I like to keep my personal email on the left display, my work email on the right display, and then I have a notepad to the side of that. It keeps everything in view, and what can I say? I've done it for years, so I'm just kind of used to it. Working on a single display sometimes feels like I'm writing with my left hand. Sure, I can do it, but it just feels kind of off, a little slower. Well, it turns out that you can take any old Android tablet and turn it into a quick and easy secondary display. I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. All right, the secret is this app called Duet. Now this was originally designed for Mac computers and iOS devices by ex-Apple engineers, but then at some point Apple uh, brought Sidecar to the Mac OS environment, it actually baked this capability of adding a second screen uh, with a device into Mac OS. So Duet, you know, it's a, it's a great app. It, it solved this problem before, but now it's brought this capability to Android. And that's what I'm going to show off here. Now you can see on the website, it supports Windows as well as Mac OS. I've already downloaded the Mac OS app and installed it. That's what you can see right here. Uh, and you can see there's a couple of different modes. There's Wired, which is what I'm going to show you right now. And then there's Air, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. So over here on the left, I have my Huawei Android tablet. I'm gonna go ahead and take this USB-C connector and plug it right into the side of the tablet. We'll go ahead and get rid of this so you don't need to see that flashing. Now you can see on the Huawei tablet, I'm getting this standard prompt for what I want to use this USB plug for. Do I wanna transfer files with it? Do I wanna charge? Pretty standard prompt. We're not even gonna to touch that. So you're gonna go ahead and cancel that. And underneath, because I have Duet installed on the tablet, I'm being asked if I want to actually connect this connection via Duet, which I do. You can click this to have it be the default action for when you plug your tablet in. I'm not gonna do that for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. We'll jump into the Android app and you can see already it recognizes it, it's connecting, and soon enough this tablet's gonna flip over and what do you know? We've got an extended desktop from my Mac Pro, my MacBook Pro on the right, extended over into my Huawei tablet on the left. You can even see the cursor that enters the screen over there. Pretty easy to do, although I will say in my playing around with things and kind of getting it set up, it's not 100% perfect. Sometimes you plug them in and then you're waiting, nothing happens. In that case, I actually had to go into the multitasking on my Huawei tablet and just dismiss it entirely to kind of like start fresh. But it's working for me, or at least it was until I backed out here. In fact, I'll show that to you. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. Jump into Duet here and boom, we're back and ready to go. Now on the MacBook Pro, what you can see over here are some settings for controlling the resolution and how things appear on the tablet over on the left hand side. I can make things a lot larger over here by adjusting the resolution and it does take a little bit of time to make that happen. But once it does, I'm sure you'll see the, the change in the size of, the, of the, uh, the status bar up at the top. It's a lot wider. The cursor's a little bit bigger. You could even make it a lot smaller if you like. Keep in mind, any time that you're making these adjustments and they fall outside of the, uh, the, the like default resolution that you have on your Android device, in person, things are gonna look maybe a little, a little blurry, a little harder to read. But really, you could bring over anything. We'll go ahead and take this duet window and take it over. And you can kind of see as things enter the screen, it's kind of a little bit jumpy. I'd say there's a, there's a minimum lag, so you're not going to be playing any games streamed over to this screen. But uh, it's serviceable. If, if you want to put 
something that's kind of informational over here. Maybe it's your Twitter feed, your TweetDeck feed, or Slack, like I said. This could be a great secondary screen to do that and to put that screen to use if you're just not doing anything with it anyways. You might as well put it to some use. And you can adjust things like the frame rate and uh, kind of the quality. And you, you would want to make these quality adjustments if you wanted to have better, uh, better response, uh, better battery life. Although I will also mention that the USB-C connection that goes into my MacBook Pro is actively charging my Huawei tablet while it's plugged in. So it's serving as the second screen and it's also charging it at the same time, which is really cool. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by ExpressVPN. VPNs protect your privacy and security online and can take your TV watching to the next level by unlocking movies and shows only available in other countries. With many of us stuck at home, it's only a matter of time until you run out of stuff to watch. Use ExpressVPN to binge watch Star Trek on the UK Netflix. Protect yourself with the VPN that I trust and use. Visit expressvpn.com slash HOA and get an extra three months free on a one-year package. That's expressvpn.com slash HOA. Expressvpn.com slash HOA. And what do you do if you happen to have a Chromebook lying around? You want to make that a second screen to your Mac or your PC? Well, you could do that. The Chrome OS supports Android apps. So if you go into the Play Store, you can install the same Duet app on the Chromebook. Here it is running. It automatically recognizes Duet Air as the default mode because you cannot use the wired uh, USB function of Duet with a Chromebook. It has to be this Air function, so it does it over the network. You just have to make sure that the Chromebook is connected to the same wireless access point as this computer, my, in this case, my MacBook Pro. When I go over to the Air option, I can see the Chromebook 48 F1 is recognized on the same network. When I click to connect wirelessly, I get a little bit of screen jumping. And yes, I will allow this device to connect via Wi-Fi. And what do you know? There we are. We've got it. <laughs> Obviously, the dimensions are a little out. And because it's so small, things are moving really slow over there. So that's when I can go back over to the MacBook Pro and maybe make an adjustment here. I'm going to make things the resolution on my Chromebook just a little bit larger so that things don't take so much time. And with wireless, yes, things move even a little bit slower than what you get out of uh, USB. So again, depending on what you're going to use this for, um, you, you just want to be really careful. You're not using it for fast moving things, but maybe like your Twitter feed or your Slack, uh, that sort of stuff might be good on that second screen over there. Now, Duet Display normally costs $19.99 for an unlimited device license. I was able to purchase the app in the Play Store recently for $9.99. That's half off, which was a nice surprise. So I definitely check it out and see if it's still on sale for you. Regardless, it's pretty flexible, and it's a great way from avoiding the cost of another monitor for your home setup. Maybe this will get you by until we all return to a life of normalcy. Send your questions to handsonandroid at twit.tv, and I'll do my best to answer them here on the show. Also, check out the show page at twit.tv slash HOA. That's where you can find all the ways to subscribe to the show in audio and video formats, as well as a link to the YouTube page where you can subscribe, thumbs up, and do all that YouTube stuff. I'm Jason Howell. Thanks for watching Hands on Android. See you next week.